Hi folks, Andy here from Andy McSmee Photography and Photo Tour Bruges. As a lot of you know, I had the Fujifilm GFX 50S medium format camera on my hands for a full week here in Bruges, Belgium. Fujifilm Belgium was kind enough to lend it to me, and for your disclaimer, there are no strings attached. This review is totally unbiased. Uh, what? Well, gang, just like my other reviews, that's the way it is. And well, this particular review is about street photography and photography on the go using the GFX. So we're going to skip over to some photos in a minute. And after that, I'll give you my overall conclusions on the uh, GFX for being out there on the street and on the move. But let me just say, if you don't want to sit through the video or even skip down to the, uh, to the after the photo side of things for full conclusions, as a bit of a spoiler, overall thoughts, I found the GFX quite acceptable for street photography. It's a very nice, high, fine quality camera. It does a lot of good work. There is, on the less powerful side of things, the autofocus that you will want to think about not being super snappy and fast as far as tracking and all that. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast with medium format cameras. Um, but I still found it quite workable, especially when, you know, the situation meant that my subject was moving fairly slow or even static. And every now and then with motion and on the move, no complaints. And then on the other side of things, which again, I'll break down to in the overall conclusions at the end, um, just for walking around with this camera, I found it very, very okay. You know, I mean, with the trending cameras getting smaller over the last few years, Fujifilm being no slack with their X-Series cameras, uh, the GFX is a little bit bigger than we're coming to expect from a camera. It's basically back up to DSLR size if you have a, a Canon 5D or a Nikon D800 sort of series. You would know that uh, these things aren't as light as many cameras are going. And the GFX is going to take you back up around that size and weight range. But as I get into in my overall conclusion, still very acceptable, still very light. For what you get compared to those other cameras, having a medium format sensor and uh, a lot of that Fuji, go Fuji goodness, I think the camera is well worth carrying around. But why don't we leave it at that? Let's jump over to some photos and then the overall conclusions. Hope it helps. Okay, so if we're talking about the GFX for street photography and just general photography on the move, gang, there are a couple ways to look at it. I mean, you, you do have to remember with medium format cameras, if you're doing something out there and you want autofocus to really keep tracking things accurately, you are going to want good light. Uh, this particular subject, and frankly, a lot of the photos I'm going to show you, they're not pushing around the continuous autofocus very aggressively or the tracking or anything like that. Because frankly, I found the GFX did a capable job, but if it has one strike against it, like so many medium format cameras, it's not exactly designed like a sports camera as far as autofocus goes. So with that said, you know, in these nice, clean, clear, quiet moments where things are moving too fast, in this case, this gentleman, like me on my bike, is waiting for the uh, bridge to go down when the boats pass through, so we had to hang out a little bit. And, uh, well, I just saw the light, I saw the moment, I saw the background port, so I broke out the GFX and grabbed this shot. And I think also that's where we have to talk about the GFX for street photography and on the move. The fact that it wasn't a huge camera to break out and spend five minutes, you know, setting up, that already is a big pro next to the image quality of the GFX. It's small, it's manageable. Like I've talked about in my previous videos and I'll say in the overall conclusions, it's a very straightforward and easy camera to work with, particularly if you're if you're already a Fujifilm user, but even if not. So for little moments like this, where I have a few seconds and the guy's not going anywhere, GFX did great. And I mean, obviously, when you're carrying around a medium format camera, this is one of the joys of having that kind of uh, sensor size and image quality on hand. I zoom in on this gentleman's face. Whoop, that's a little bit much. And it wasn't his face. Oh, what's going on there? Let's try that again. Hey, 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 hey. There we go. All right, that's close enough. You can see sharpness, clarity across the board is looking great. With the medium format sensor, I can uh, make that nice soft background and it looks good. It is the kit lens, 32 to 64, which I found produced very acceptable bouquet or bokeh or bouquet, if you so want to call it that. 
very, very acceptable. I noticed some of the prime lenses certainly, as you would expect, did a better job as far as bouquet, but I found it very, very okay on the bouquet. So there's that. And there's that. What else we got? Another little bike moment, another little street moment. This one, I'm just hanging out in front of a bakery while the uh, lights are looking good and the sky is going dark. I have boosted up the ISO to 500 if you take a little look over in the corner. That's so I can still get a reasonable shutter speed because, well, I'm not trying to freeze this cyclist. I actually want that sense of motion as they go through. But with the ISO and the uh, aperture being where they are, that is a nice way to still get a fast shutter speed and uh, you know get the shot that I've sort of visualized there. And it is very nice, and part of why I included this uh, photo on there, that when I zoom in at 500 ISO, there is not really any grain worth mentioning. I mean, you go in on the signs and the dark areas. There is a couple of artifacts kicking around, but that's only to be expected at this extreme zoom. And frankly, with just a little touch of like uh, noise reduction, sharpness bumping, I don't think I'm going to see those artifacts to any concern. And it is, of course, another factor as you sh as you turn up the ISO that the colors might start washing out a little bit, not in the sense of overexposing, but just looking a little duller than they should. You can notice as I zoom in on this lamp in particular that the colors are looking great. You know, the picture quality is not suffering any everything's looking real fine and fine and fly just the way i like it for my street shots next shot again with the bikes and the people this is just around the back of city hall that's one of the city bikes and uh from what i can tell that's one of the city workers just getting some paperwork from a to b again the gfx just worked out great here you know i mean i zoom in on on the areas where everything's in focus and it just roars for that one, I think I was a little bit off because you can see the handlebars as well as the gentleman are just a little bit soft. I'll save your privacy there, fella. So that's somewhere where I'd say the photographer uh, missed it more than the camera. But you can see for what did work out, it worked out real good. Okay. And while I was there, why not grab a photo of the bike, leave it in color this time. That's how street photography works. It's not just all about people. And if it is for you, then you just wait for a couple people to show up in the background. It's also shooting, you know, with the sun pretty close in there. So this is where a medium format sensor, or just frankly, any good size sensor is really going to start making a difference. And you can see I still had a lot to work with with the GFX. And again, on the practical side of things, not even counting the image quality, but just how I got to that image is really nice having that tilt screen on the GFX. You know, to be able to go low like this without splatting myself on the ground uh, and just be able to focus on my work. That was uh, a real pleasure of the GFX on the practical side. Another pleasure, never mind the GFX, is this beautiful woman I call my wife. She's always patient and waiting for me while we're uh, running around taking photos, and the GFX was no exception. And the reason I include this photo, guys, is because, well, while you're out there taking your photos, you might look over, see the wife smiling, seeing that you're happy doing your thing. Why not just take a photo? And, I mean, just swinging the camera around with the GFX, this was a breeze. We got sharpness. We got everything we need. We got rich colors. We got this beautiful lady smiling. So, uh, you know, I could go on about image quality, but if nothing else, just a reminder to uh, take a little photo of the wife to say thanks. Flowers and chocolates don't hurt either, as some of you may have heard from me in the past. That's our board our boy Blake. He is the fine staffy uh, terrier that we adopted about 10 months ago. He was my subject for the quick moving side of things with the GFX. Uh, I'm not going to lie, gang. I, you know, I mentioned it earlier. If this, the subject is fairly static, you're probably not going to have any problems as far as autofocus goes. But when things are moving fast, don't expect too much you know this was a very fast moving dog so fair's got to be said but you can see i mean the autofocus was just off by a smidge if i look at my numbers my shutter speed had no problem 680th of a second my my iso at 1600 you can see there's a little bit of grain but frankly we go to areas where the focus is better and things are 
quite acceptable. However, if we're talking about street photography, moments on the move like this boy chasing his ball, well, just be a little cautious with the GFX or do what I do and just go back to manual focusing, use fo uh, focus peaking, and work your skill. It's not that hard. They manage for ages before autofocus, remember? Okay, that is Yanis. He is a uh, scarf maker of the linen variety. You can see him wearing one of his beautiful creations right there. That's also, again, just showing you where the GFX delivers heaps of quality and sharpness and all sorts of good stuff. In case you're wondering, those are my numbers. One eight hundredth of a second at ISO 800. Yanis was passing by with his loom on the way to work to uh, make his scarves over in the fish market. And while seeing that, I had to grab it. And for this situation, guys, to give you an idea on the autofocus, I had it on tracking autofocus, but I told Yanis to slow down a little bit. So I got my sharpness. Everything worked out on this uh, on this situation, but he wasn't exactly bolting by with 20 cups of coffee in his system uh, late for work. He took it nice and easy, and you can see everything worked out. Just a real treat on that one. Okay. Okay. You know what? I like ice cream, and when I'm traveling around taking photos, I sometimes like ice cream, and then I like taking photos of ice cream. So I think this photo shows where I'm a happy boy. I get my ice cream. I get a character behind me smiling and giving me my ice cream. And, well, when I'm out there taking photos, I mean, why not grab a moment of this? And this is, again, where the GFX just does great. A medium format camera, it's going to be able to drop those depths of field nice and easy. You can see... Just real nice bouquet, again, from the kit lens. It's not too nervous. It's not too jittery. Everything's working out well. I'm preserving this guy's privacy, but I'm getting a, a nice sharp, sharp focus on my uh, vanilla ice cream that is going to be mine. So a little example, little thought. And switching it up, this is a nice, clear, sharp-focused uh, street portrait or a cafe portrait over a Cafe Vlesinga. I was taking some other types of photos, and I saw this couple looking over. They started asking me a few questions, and we got chatting. So, as I am want to do as a street photographer who loves his street portraits, I asked them nicely if they would pose for a shot. And, you know, I mean, worked out great. I'm a big fan of what the GFX and a lot of the Fujifilm gear does in black and white, especially this new Acros film simulation mode with the yellow filter. Just really pleasing tones. Believe you me, I could pull up those shadows more, but I like that nice contrasty feeling. And, well, nice moment like this where everything's crisp and clear. I can tell what kind of beer this ha guy's having. I could probably make half a billboard out of that already. And at the edge of the frame, excuse me, at the uh, back of the frame, I shot this at F8, believe you me. So you can see I got some pretty good depth of field. And, you know, just for you nitpickers on the uh, lens quality at F8, Pretty good sharpness in the corners overall, hey? Nothing to complain about. Okay, moving through, switching it up. Now we're at the street market. This is on the market square when it's a uh, Wednesday and there's nothing else going on. It's a great little situation to try out the street photography in any respect with any camera. So obviously I hauled myself over there with the GFX. Just nice, wide open, clean street shot. For this one, just peeking into the uh, EXIF, we're at ISO 800, F8. So you can see we just get like, again, really low grain, really good sharpness, nice depth across the frame if you're talking about that sort of stuff. But... I am a happy man overall for what the results are producing. Particularly, as some of us know, when you turn up the ISOs, the sharpness goes and so does the color. Very nice, easy, workable colors here. I'm a happy man. And then with the market context, to give you a few candid little moments that I'm grabbing on the fly, the bread maker is they're about to shut shop for the day because uh, there's only a couple breads left. GFX worked out great here. Again, like I said, I'm a big fan of how they uh, resolve in black and white. And just being able to focus over on the backpack and then having pretty much what I need is working out a treat. I do think on this one, actually, maybe it's the photographer more than anything. Oh, a hundredth of a second. Should have push, pushed up my ISO knowing it'd work out. I got a little more motion blur on him. 
but you can see the things that are static are working out real good. All right, this one, just an interesting little street moment. Uh, I left it in here just to show you how the colors work out, guys. You know, this is one of the reasons I got into the Fujifilm system in the first place. Really nice, rich colors, everything looking really natural. Uh, what can I say? This is this is just part of what I love the Fuji for. And I should mention, of course, uh, after I imported the RAW, I just applied the Provia film simulation. Everything worked out a treat. Nice, rich colors. And, of course, image quality is no slouch there. I think. Look at that. Not too shabby. Okay. Another little street moment, this one telling the story of Bruges a little more profoundly with the market belfry in there. The only reason I wanted to include this shot, guys, I mean, never mind the EXIF and all that stuff. This is just to show you where it's really handy with that tilt screen on the GFX, how you can tilt it uh, more than one angle. You know, it's not just up and down so that you can do your horizontal shots. It's also left to right so you can do your uh, vertical shots way down low, not being too obvious about things really pleased with that it's also a situation where i do push around the highlights and shadows rather aggressively so if we jump into our develop module you can see shadows 100 highlights minus 100 bit of contrast to make it feel real again and some other stuff with clarity so forth when i go down like i mentioned provia standard that's getting me what i need and it's looking good doing it I think on top of that, gang, it is worth mentioning. Maybe I did. Oh, no, no brushing, no recovery, no nothing there. So, like I say, everything working out a treat. And then let's get back into full screen. There's a nice little street candid I caught on the way. I just passed it, felt it, saw it. And this is where, you know, the autofocus worked out great. Good light, strong subject to catch on to. Uh, even gave him a triple crown on the background. Thankfully, with that medium format goodness, it's a little softer. But uh, for street photography, for these little grabs on the go, a lot of the time the GFX didn't do too bad at all. And I mean that in the British way of not too bad at all, meaning really quite good. Really quite good. All right, this is switching it up from the markets. Now we're looking at Quasimundo Bike Tours, run by the infamous Yoss, who has hit in his face for this shot because he's busy looking after his group. And this gang, you know, just shows where I think, again, the GFX does great. You know, whether you're doing street photography, just passing these people and uh, seeing a shot, whether you're part of the group and then jump off your bike, go low, break out the tilt screen and grab a shot like this. Everything worked out a treat, very low distortions, very high quality as far as sharpness, dynamic range, all this stuff I've been talking about. So victory as far as I see it. I know for a fact, too, that the next photo is out of order, so I'm just going to jump out and then jump in again. There we go. We're still with Quasimondo, and you can see they stopped uh, for a little stop to uh, see parts of Bruges, and I just snuck in and grabbed photo of one of the bikes with the logo on there it's not all about people with street photography and you know this is just again where the gfx pays off wonderfully to be able to drop that depth of field to be able to get this killer sharpness that you know gets so precise that if you're not careful you will have quasimundo website in focus but you won't have the logo in focus or bike tours bruges belgium in focus so pretty interesting what the GFX can deliver. And for street photography, I mean, it gets tricky enough sometimes, or photography on the move. So watch your settings. And just remember, if you're stepping into this system, that uh, you gotta you got to be on your game for this. All right? Speaking of being on, on the game, I got a moment alone with Yoss so I could get that nice portrait. His face was blocked in the other shot. Let's show his ugly mug. Also shows off where the lenses can just really be a treat on the GFX. I mean, never mind the sensor helping you drop your depth of field. It's the fact that I'm using the 110 millimeter F2 lens made very much for portraits. When I stick it to F2, I get that beautiful soft background and the depth of field. I mean, it's so thin that you can see Yoss's glasses are in focus. And by the back of that, it's already losing focus. And when we go to beard bits, you can see where it's sharp. It's just razor sharp, excuse the pun. And then after that, it starts dropping out beautifully. 
very, very bucolicious, very, very bucolicious, and something, something, frankly, that also gives me faith in the uh, GFX system is where their lenses are developing. All right, popping it over and moving through, taking people out just for this quick photo of uh, one of the boats going through the ports. I mentioned this because well, while you're out there on the move, street photography, I think we've talked about quite extensively. So when you're on the move and you see a bridge up and uh, you're brave enough to jump that little fence, get to where you need to be by the waterline to get your shot. It is really nice when you have the GFX and it's a little bit contrasty. Uh, you might have to do a little bit of extra shadow raising and pushing with a brush afterwards on the sign. And to have all that kind of like image quality, power, dynamic range at my disposal. If I'm grabbing a, a shot on the sly and I have to do some fixing afterwards, really, really pleased where the GFX delivers. And this boat photo is not in there just for nothing. It is a little prelude to the mainly just non-street photography, but on the go side of this uh, review of the GFX, which is where I jumped on a boat with Mikey of the Boat Tours. Venice of the North is the name of the company. Boats of Bruges, if you're on social media. He's a really awesome fella. It's a family business going back to the 50s. He's kind enough to uh, get up early like on that morning and drive a boat around while we uh, take a few photos with the GFX. And this is what I mean by on the move gang. Now this isn't your typical boat tour around Bruges where, you know, they only have so much time and there's a bunch of other people on the boat. Mikey uh, got up early fired up the boat so we could go out on our own. But of course, with a boat, even when you have these ideal situations, somebody pulling up, giving you some time, there is going to be motion and other things involved. We did get some really nice light that morning, so everything played out well. But for this on-the-move sort of situation, uh, it's really nice where while we're cruising around, whether it's grabbing photos of his colleagues and friends over there out there on the boats, whether it's grabbing a little bit of street photography as we fly around, or when it's just, you know, going under a bridge and seeing all these stalactites and uh, going for a shot. Even though we're having chances to pull up, go slow, all that kind of thing, there is still motion, and motion involved. And you can see how, well, I mean, just even without zooming in, the GFX is delivering a ton of image quality here. And then, of course, with beautiful Bruges, you pull up with really nice light. You take a photo of the Rose and Hood Kai, the postcard corner of Bruges. You're going to get really, really workable results. You know, you zoom in, you get sharpness across the board. This is playing out real nice. To give you an idea, again, on the EXIF, I'm only at ISO 250, F8, 350th of a second. What I do find interesting, if we go into the editing side of things, is this is, again, where even on a nice morning like this, I can play around with my highlights, my shadows, a bit of my clarity, maybe, push up the exposure if I was a bit too dark, or if I was shooting dark to keep those highlights under control. That, on top of a film simulation, I'm on my way and I got a killer uh, killer shot as far as the technical, at least as, it, as I see it. Now, a few more photos of the boats just to give you a couple more ideas what the views can be like, what you can expect from the GFX for this on-the-move stuff. Oh, wrong direction. That, I think, shows, again, where the GFX just does a magnificent job with colors, with resolving, with me having to crop out a little bit afterwards because of course I'm on a boat and things are on the move, but still having enough image quality, I could probably blow it up to life size. And then guys, just towards finishing things off, there's one of the old almshouses. Believe you me, this was a very high contrast scene. Even though we have the boat to ourselves, uh, we're at the mercy of where the sun is. So I'm shooting into the sun. And if I uh, reset this real quick, I just want to show you if the computer will play along. Come on, buddy. Hey, hey, what's going on here? There we go. Well, you can see, guys, if I reset this shot, extremely high contrast. I had to do a little correction because the boat moved when I didn't expect it. But I still have uh, everything I need out of this photo when needed. What's going on here? All right, I'll fix that up later. 
last shot of the day, gang, just to go full screen while we do it. That played out really well. You can imagine for this kind of shot that pulls together just the way I'm looking for it to pull together. Very, very delighted that I have the GFX. Certainly, if you're doing any printing on any big size, medium format has its advantages. If I'm going to be doing a uh, gallery show on Bruges, which I'm sure I'm going to be doing at some point or another, I've done one and there are more to come, I'll be glad if I can blow this up to the size of the gallery wall. All right. Why don't we switch back over to Andycam? You can hear my overall conclusions as far as the GFX for street photography and shooting on the move. Hope these images helped. Let's go back. Okay, so those are some pretty photos, or at least I hope you think so, of the GFX in action as far as street photography and just generally being on the move, whether it's a boat or otherwise. To get on to the conclusion side of things, guys, I mean, I can keep it fairly short and sweet on this. Uh, I found the GFX very acceptable for street photography. I mean, certainly the image quality is no slouch, whether you're going up to higher ISOs or keeping it nice and low, the camera delivered. As I mentioned throughout the review, and I even said it at the top of the, uh, the review that the autofocus is capable, but I wouldn't lean on it too much for fast moving situations, especially as the low light kicks in. Um, and obviously if I'm on the move back of a boat or front of a boat or whatever, whether it's a boat that's on private tour and we can take our time or just speeding through the canals of Bruges, I do find the GFX can deliver, but of course I am aware of its limits and, uh, you know, that's part of the nature of the beast, especially with uh, medium format cameras. And hey, come on, it is a first generation camera by Fujifilm as far as medium format camera goes. And uh, well, I found it quite acceptable, but I certainly look forward to where we can have some growth. And that's also where it's an interesting point on the GFX and basically any of the Fujifilm gear that you're looking at. Because don't forget, guys, one of the things that I love about Fujifilm that has, you know, made me get into the system and just really look at their gear quite seriously on the investment side of things is the fact that they don't just sell you the product and walk away. They'll give you firmware updates that'll take care of things like autofocus issues as possible. Maybe just throw in another features, fix a couple of bugs, that kind of thing. So, you know, I have some faith that there's going to be some firmware updates on the autofocus and otherwise as far as the GFX goes. And at the same time, if you look at their X series of cameras, with what they've been doing with the X Pros, with the uh, XT models, even their consumer grade cameras in the X series, they give you these nice firmware updates and you definitely see like the full value of the camera come out over time. That and the fact that the X series is onto its third generation of sensors and just overall iterations of cameras. Well, when I see what Fujifilm does with the X series cameras and how each, you know, each next major release on the system is something substantial you know there's clear changes whether it's autofocus whether it's some more pixels whether it's a couple more features i do find fujifilm as a company i can trust whether it's the gfx or otherwise to look at issues that can be fixed and not just say buy the next model they'll fix it with a firmware update and when it does come time to say okay we've reached our limit now it is by the next model I have a lot of faith about that next model actually delivering a, a substantial increase. So there's all that. I mean, as far as wandering around with the GFX, the practical side of things, aside from the image images themselves, I mean, you're wandering around with a camera all day, you're doing some street photography, you're trying to be subtle on top of it nine times out of 10. Uh, how does the GFX stack up for that? I mean, just in the real world situation of carrying this thing, how does it work? For me, I found it very acceptable. It is certainly a bigger camera than their X-Series cameras. You are going to be carrying a little more weight if you've ever had a uh, Canon, I don't know, 5D Mark Mark 1234 or a D800 on the Nikon side of things, or basically any good size DSLR. You are going to be feeling that kind of weight again, because obviously it does increase in size. However, unlike a lot of those D800s and uh, 5Ds, in fact, all of them, you get a medium format sensor for it. So if you feel okay with hauling around 
that kind of weight like you did back in the DSLR days compared to now with a lot of mirrorless cameras like the Fuji X series. Well, it's going to add up a little bit, but I find it's well worth your while. That medium format sensor, all the advantages it brings, whether it's image quality, depth of field control, what have you. I find the GFX really didn't feel like it uh, It didn't deserve to to get counted in the uh, in the luggage weight. Also, just wandering around, I find, found it very comfortable. I use, like you might be seeing, a harness system, so I can basically clip cameras underneath and have them rest on my shoulders. I found for that the GFX was extremely comfortable. I didn't really do the neck thing, but I also noticed that they were easily removable, some really clever thinking there. And actually, if you want to talk about practical design and just being out there on the street, it's something I wish every camera manufacturer would do, and it makes me, again, just have more faith in Fujifilm, is the fact that where the straps clip onto, they're not those usual ringlets that stick out of the body. They're little clips that are flat, so that means that if the camera takes a knock, a really hard fall, you have a good chance of that not smashing into the body from the force and then damaging your precious uh, GFX. So... It's a bit loosey-goosey, you know, I didn't get that much time playing out there with the uh, street photography side of things with the GFX, but as you saw, I got a few catches here and there, and that's also a bit the nature of street photography. But I hope this helps. If you did enjoy this, of course, please leave a comment, please leave a like, maybe even share it, subscribe, do all that kind of good stuff. And I'll leave you until then. My name is Andy McSweeney of Andy McSweeney Photography and Photo Tour Bruges. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until uh, the next one, which is going to be my overall conclusions of the GFX, I wish you well and get out there, get shooting. See ya.